Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. I'm so glad that you're here. It's great to have you here. I know we've got, again, this is one of those seasons, man, where we've got so many folks that are out sick. I, I can't remember seeing the flu like it is. You got flu, COVID, all this stuff that's out there right now. But I'm glad that you're here. And we're going to have a great time this morning. You know, in the midst of all of this, we choose joy. We choose joy. That is, that's what we're going to be focused on today. Joy to the world, the message today. And uh, man, we get to sing these great Christmas songs, these great Christmas carols today. It's hard for me to believe that we are one week away from Christmas Day. Uh, it just blows my mind. Uh, you know, when you, when you get my age now, like Brother Randy that just walked in, Brother Randy Lee, good to have you, brother, um, that uh, we, we, when we get to be our age, they start coming around a little quicker. <laughs> it's hard to believe it. But anyway, uh, we're going to have a wonderful time this morning. Let me just mention a couple quick things. One, and that is that tonight we will have discipleship training tonight. And then at 6 o'clock, we will be observing the Lord's Supper tonight. We will have candlelight communion service tonight. So it's always a special, special service. And so be a part of that uh, tonight. And so with that in mind, I need to meet with the deacons at 445. 445, 15 minutes before discipleship training tonight to talk about, uh, again, about the service tonight. Wednesday night, we'll be on regular schedule. Regular schedule Wednesday night. Next Sunday morning for Christmas Day, we will be meeting. And, of course, we will be meeting. And we will have um, no Sunday school, but we will have a Christmas Day worship service at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock next Sunday morning. And, um, and then no services next Sunday night. Okay? All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to uh, bless this time that we have together this morning. Father, we come today for one reason, and that is to lift up the precious name of Jesus in this place. Lord God, I, I pray that as we sing that, and as we, as we hear your word proclaimed, God, that you would speak to us in a mighty way. And may we be a blessing to you. Father, you are the audience today, and our desire is to please you, to honor you with what we sing, what we preach, what we pray, what we read today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Let's stand together if you will. We're going to start with the angels we have heard on high. Let's sing together. <clears throat> angels we have heard.
be seated. I'm going to ask you again to take your Bibles and turn to Psalm 38. We continue to read through the Psalms now. We read again, for those of you that do not know, we read through the entire New Testament. It took us about 10 years to do that in worship. I believe it's so important of a time for us to read the scripture. I think it's a vital part of worship. And so Brother Kevin today is going to read from Psalm 38. And so you, you follow along as he reads. Good morning. Certainly a psalm that we can all relate to. Lord, do not rebuke me in your wrath, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. For your arrows pierce me deeply, and your hand presses me down. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your anger, nor any health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone from my head. Like a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. My wounds are foul and festering because of my foolishness. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long, for my loins are full of inflammation, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and severely broken. I groan because of the turmoil in my heart. Lord, all my desire is before you, and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart pants. My strength fails me. As for the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. My loved ones and my friends stand aloft from, the, from my flesh, and my relatives stand afar off. There are also who seek me, my life lay snares for me. Those who seek my heart speak of destruction and plan to deception all the day long. But I like a deaf man do not hear, and I'm like a mute who does not open his mouth. Thus I am like a man who does not hear, and in whose mouth is no response. For in you, Lord, I hope you will hear, O my Lord, my God. For I said, hear me, lest they rejoice over me. Least when my foot slips, they exalt themselves against me. For I am ready to fall, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare my iniquity, I will be in anguish over my sin. But my enemies are vigorous, and they are strong, and those who hate me wrongfully have multiplied. Those who render evil for good, they are my adversaries, because I follow what is good. Do not forsake me, O Lord, O my God. Be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Let us pray. Father God, we're just so thankful for your word. What a gift it is to our hearts. I just pray that we hear it and we understand it, Father, and we follow its instructions. Father, I just thank you so much for uh, this psalm this morning and what it means to us. Hear us, Father. Forgive us our sins, Father. Just thank you so much for this time of the year. And you have given us a way that our sins will be forgiven. And this is Jesus. And we celebrate that this time of the year. Thank you so much, Father. And I pray all things in his name. Amen.
choirs, they come down. Let's sing this beautiful chorus. There's something about that name, the name of Jesus. Let's sing it together. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name, Master.
One of the most beautiful things about Christmas is the music, amen? And to be able to listen to that, and um, uh, thank you so much, ladies, for, um, for sharing your gifts with us this morning uh, in worshiping the Lord. Charles Swindoll wrote a book called Laugh Again. And uh, we pretty typically, when we think about Chuck Swindoll, we don't think about him writing books like that. But he wrote a book called Laugh Again. And he said, basically, there are two kinds of people in the world. There is the person who chooses joy and the people who don't. We certainly, I think probably we've all experienced that where there, there's a time in our life where we have to choose joy. Maybe even we don't feel it, but we choose to experience this joy. Many times I think it is one of the missing things that's uh, in our life. We, we magnify devotion, and we should. And we magnify determination to follow the Lord. But we also need to not overlook joy that the Scripture speaks of so clearly, and in particular when we think about Christmas. And so I, I'm reminded of a story also of uh, the great Warren Wiersbe. Warren Wiersbe was leading a Wednesday night worship service, and, and it was in and around Christmas time. And, and uh, he was discussing how some people, believe it or not, are negative about the celebration of the birth of Jesus. And this is what he said. He said that as he was speaking that, that a Jewish Christian stood up and said, why shouldn't we celebrate the birth of Christ? Because the Father sure made a big fuss about it. That's true, folks. The Father made a big fuss about Christmas. And we should make the same big fuss about it. And so I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 2. And I know that you have read these verses all of your life. If you're, you're, if you're in the church, if you grew up in church, you grew up with your family being Christians, you read these verses. You came to pageants where these verses were, were quoted and, and where children would share these verses. And you've heard preachers preach from this passage many times many times. I want you to stand in honor to the Word of God this morning as we read from this great story, simply calling this message joy to the world today. Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 8. Now there were those living in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night, and behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told under them. You may be seated. So the question comes today, why should we be experiencing joy? Why should we be experiencing joy? And this whole idea of joy to the world. 
first thing I want to mention today is why we should be experiencing this joy as a, as a believer. And that is that you and I have a personal invitation from God to experience this joy. You and I have a personal invitation that was given to us. And we just read it here. And, and, and it was in the proclamation that was given by the angels in speaking to the shepherds on that, on that night. Think about the shepherds for a minute. You, you think about shepherds. One is they were, they were blue-collar workers. They were definitely blue-collar workers. They were, they were work, folks that worked very hard. They were, they were people that were literally in danger quite a bit of the time. They lived in danger. They also were folks that would be the brunt of many a joke. There would be those in the upper echelons of society that would have jokes to be said about these shepherds who lived on the low end of the socioeconomic ladder. And yet, isn't it amazing <laughs> that it is God himself who decides that I, I desire for this message to be presented to these shepherds. He didn't present it, didn't go, to the, didn't go to the emperor's house, did not go to Herod's home, but instead he presented this message to the shepherds. And they became the significant receivers of this grace of God because it was only by the grace of God that it would be extended to them. So the emphasis uh, fi falls three times here in the message they give on personal pronouns. This is a message for you. This message that they presented is a message for all of us. Look at what it says in Luke 2.10. It says, and I bring you good news. It didn't say I bring good news. It says I bring you good news. Speaking to the shepherds. And then I think by the Holy Spirit preserving this far speaks to us today that I bring you good news. Now, how many of you would agree that we need some good news today? We need some good news. And, and listen, very simply speaking, the gospel is the good news. The gospel of Jesus coming to this world and, and living the perfect life and, and, and going to a cross and being resurrected. That is all the gospel is the good news for us. Luke 2.11 says, and there has been born for you a Savior. This Savior is available to all of us. This Savior has is, is come for, for you. And Luke 2.12 says this will be a sign for you. And so we can have great joy knowing that we have a personal invitation to participate in his purpose for our life. Folks, that ought to bring us incredible joy today. In the midst of everything else that's going on in the world today and all around us is, is that we get a personal invitation to participate in God's purpose for our life. He has a purpose for every one of us. And we get to celebrate that today as we observe Christmas. Ought to bring us great joy. E. Stanley Jones, great missionary preacher, once put it like this. He said, when I met Christ, I felt like I swallowed sunshine. <laughs> when I met Jesus, I felt like I, I swallowed sunshine. Well, when sometimes when I'm up here, maybe even you look at me, and I wonder if instead of swallowing sunshine, we swallowed a persimmon or something like that. You know, old persimmons are pretty. Some of you may really like them, but I taste them. They're pretty bitter. Mm -hmm. We'll draw you up. And sometimes I think that when we come to church, it's, it's, it's almost like everybody's had a persimmon that morning. When, when we have sunshine, when, when we have Jesus in us, when we get to participate in his purpose for our lives. So folks caught up in Jesus get to experience joy. Folks that are caught up in legalism and religion even belittle joy. I'm telling you, I'm excited. I'm happy that we get to experience this incredible joy in Christ. And then notice how the shepherds received the invitation. When they first heard it and they first saw this, I mean, let's just kind of put our, uh, our feet in their shoes if they had shoes on. But in, in that moment, 
just think about them at that moment. There they are out there taking care of their sheep. And all of a sudden, all these things began to go on in the heavenlies. And then you got an angel's proclamation that comes to them. I want to tell you, I would probably be terrified. They were terrified. They were terrified over what had, had happened in front of their eyes. I happen to think that their heart went to their throat. And they wondered if they would even be able to stand it. But God did not want them to stay in fear. Instead, God wanted them to celebrate. He wanted them to celebrate all that was going on at that time and to be able to enjoy his presence. So I want to ask you a question today. On a daily basis, do you enjoy the presence of God? We ought to be able to enjoy it when we come together for corporate worship. But my question is, do, do you enjoy the presence of God every day? Because of Christmas, because of this personal message to us, you and I ought to be able to experience this personal joy. And then something else. Why, have, why Christians can have joy? Why does Christmas bring us joy? We have a universal Savior. We can experience this joy because we have a universal Savior. Look at verse 10. Verse 10 says, Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. There they are, shaking in their boots. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for some people. No, it's not what it says. For I bring you this great message, this announcement for all People. In other words, salvation is not offered to the privileged few. It was not offered to just those that were in the higher parts of society in that day. It was offered to those that are those out there keeping the sheep. Aren't you glad that the gospel is for all people? Aren't you glad that the gospel is for ordinary folks like us? That it, that it was not reserved for the kings and the priests and the Pharisees and all of that, but the, that the Christmas is available, this great message is for all of us. This gospel message of his, his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, or all the heart of the gospel. And this grace of God extends to all races. It, it, it extends to all stratas of society. I'm reminded of another scripture. I'm reminded of 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And behold, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. There is a transforming work of Christ when a person gets saved. That transforming work is, has a broad application according to that verse because it says, if any man. God's grace is available to all. No one can be so far from God that it can't be redeemed. And listen, some of us can't uh, and experience the salvation as a result of God calling us and bringing us out of a, a lifestyle far, far away from Him. And you experience a radical conversion if any man, no matter what you've done, be in Christ. That is a broad application. It is also has a strict limitation if any man be in Christ. You see, listen to me. When we think about it at Christmas, at any other time during the year, that the remedy for people, the remedy for your life, the remedy for your sin is in Jesus alone. It is in Jesus himself. And then it has a transforming work of Christ. In other words, that there is a grand implication for what Jesus does in our life. And that is, the implication is, when Christ comes in, I'm a new creature. I'm a new creation. I'm a new person in Christ. That's all a part of this great news about having a, a, a salvation for all people. As Jesus offers salvation to those that are dying. Those that are dying spiritually. We have a universal Savior. But listen to me. We have a universal Savior, but that does not mean we have universalism. There's a difference between the gospel being presented and shared for the universe 
Universalism is the doctrine that says that all will ultimately be saved. And I want you to understand that is heresy. All will not be saved. That's universalism saying that it comes to the point where at the end that all people are going to be saved. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You're only saved by placing your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Some people will say, well, I'm saved because I, I, I go to church or I'll be saved because I've been baptized or I'm saved because, because I believe what I believe really with all of my heart. And, and no matter who I believe in or what I believe in, as long as I believe that's going to make me right with God and that there are many ways to God, I want to tell you that's a lie. If you're believing that, you're in trouble. So joy to the world is our, one of our favorite Christmas hymns. It is for me. Joy to the world. This favorite Christmas hymn. Why can I have joy when I sing that song? Because joy, this joy we're talking about is not confined to Bethlehem. This joy that we're talking about is not just confined to the United States of America. It's not just confined to Jackson Parish. This joy that is available to, to us is it's for the folks in Romania that we're going to be going to in March. It's for the folks that are in Malawi that we're going to be taking a group over in the summer. The, the gospel, the good news is for them. The good news is for folks in Montana or South Dakota, wherever we decide to go inside our country. For those that go down South Louisiana, this gospel, this joy to the world is for all of those people. The joy of Christmas is based on a day-by-day -day celebration of Jesus. And why can we celebrate? Because the Bible says in John 1 and verse 14, the Word became flesh <laughs> and dwelt among us. Our joy does not reside in a season of the year. Our joy resides in a Savior. Boy, we forget that sometimes when we come to the season, that our joy is because of him. And then why, why can there be joy for us? We have a verifiable experience. There is a verifiable experience. The shepherds had immediate verification. They, they, they went to Bethlehem. They went to Bethlehem and they looked around and the Spirit of God led them to right there where they found the baby. Imagine as their hearts raced when they found the baby. Imagine what they thought. Listen, this has just been shared with us and now we see with our own eyes. It is a verifiable experience for all of us. You see, what happened with the shepherds? They received the witness of the angels. This is the same thing that needs to happen in us. You see, the angels came and they proclaimed and they received the witness of the angels. When they heard it and they saw it, they believed the message. So we get called from God. God speaks to us. We believe the testimony. And then the result is we go and sit down and do nothing. Right? No, no, no. No, I don't think so. I think because, listen, we receive the witness of the angels. We believe that testimony of who Jesus is with all of our heart. Put it like this. You hear the preacher preach. You read the Bible. You open up the Bible. And the God's Spirit speaks to you and draws you. And, 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 and you understand. You receive the witness. You believe the testimony of the Word of God. You believe the Holy Spirit as He speaks to you. And then you go forth and you proclaim the good news. That's what they did. They went out and proclaimed it everywhere they went. So I think about it. Uh, this, this past week, I, I was uh, in, in a drive through lane, and uh, it hit me. I, I realized where I was and that this was probably not going to be a good experience. I'm probably not going to get all the food that I ordered. And that happened to be true, by the way. I get through all the way, all the way through. I'm not going to even name the establishment. I get all the way through the line. And then I get out there and I check my stuff. And they don't have everything in there. 
And I said, well, I'm going to go to the door here. I'm going to be very nice because I remembered I had a hat on. And the hat said, give them Jesus. <laughs> so it, it, it wasn't, uh, I, had, I had to watch what I did. I had to watch my testimony. And so anyway, make a long story short, they were having their Christmas party inside. I couldn't get inside. I had to get back in the line at the drive through Kids, grandkids are home screaming, wanting food. I'm back in the line. I go back through, and I tried my best to give them Jesus. <laughs> and I get back through the line, and she actually said, uh, I'm sorry about that. Happy holidays. And I said, "Hun, Merry Christmas to you. Why don't we spread that message, huh? Why don't we, everywhere we go, let's bring Jesus up for the next couple of weeks, huh? As, as we experience the uh, Christmas season. What about we do that every day? Let's bring Jesus up to somebody. Let's share Jesus with somebody. And then our joy can be verified also. Our joy can be verified in the face of struggle, in the joy, face of pain, we can have joy. There was a young woman who, was, who told of her mother's fight against cancer, and I can identify with this because I watched my mother fight it. Her mother was filled with the joy of Christ. She had lost her voice, and she had great pain. She was in the she was in the hospital, and the nurse entered into the hospital room late one night and said this, Miss Maxine, you have something I have never found, and I need it. Well, her mother could not speak, but the smile came over her face. Tears began to flow in joy. She took a piece of paper, and she wrote, on that piece of paper about Jesus and what Jesus had done for her. Chaplain came by and he happened, guess what? He picked up on it, what was going on there, and he was able to take that piece of paper and lead that nurse to the Lord. Folks, I want to tell you, no matter where you are in life, you can have joy. You can have joy in Jesus. That's what he does for us. It is a verifiable experience. I'm reminded of an old song that I, I, I'd sing it for you, but I won't. Some of you know it, some of you not. It's a song that says, joy is the flag. Anybody know that song? Joy is the flag. Y'all look at me like I'm crazy, okay? I know Kendra knows it, so Kendra, you can sing with me. No, I'm not going to sing it. But this is what it says. It says, joy is the flag flown high from the castle of my heart. From the castle of my heart. From the castle of my heart. Joy is the flag flown high from the castle of my heart. And the king is in residence there. Let it fly in the sky. Let the whole world know. Let the whole world know. Let it fly in the sky. Let the whole world know that the king is in residence there. Do you have joy in your heart? Are you letting the banner of Christ fly from your heart so that when people are around you, they know, they know that Jesus has done something in your life. They know something is different about you, and they say, hey, I want something of what she's got or what he has, and that opens the door flying wide open to share the truth or the message of Jesus. Now, this joy we can have is because we have a living, personal relationship with Jesus. A living, personal relationship with Jesus. Think about Mary. Mary felt joy over Jesus, the part that God was allowing her to be able to play in this. And it says, no doubt, you moms can understand some of this. It says that she kept those things in her heart. And she pondered them, and she, she meditated upon them, and she thought upon them. And no doubt, when 33 years or so later, when Jesus went to the cross, she was thinking about those things, wasn't she? Mary had great joy in her heart. 
The angels felt joy over Jesus and said, we bring, we bring you good tidings of great joy that shall be to all people. Why did they have joy? Because they had the privilege of being able to herald, hark the herald angels sing, the privilege of being able to herald the one who is the Savior of the world. They had that great honor. I want to tell you that the greatest honor of my life is being able to stand and proclaim the message of Jesus Christ. That is the greatest honor of my life, to be a herald. That should be for all of us the greatest honor that we have, to be able to tell people the truth about who Jesus is and what he's done in our life. Simeon and Anna felt great joy. Man, they've been praying for this their whole life. Simeon's waiting, and then, then the Spirit prompts him. One day, when, the, when this couple walks in, and they got a baby, and the Spirit says, there he is. <laughs> Can you imagine the joy Simeon had? And then Anna, she'd been her whole, for years and years and years and years, she'd been praying and fasting for this day. And then that's where Simeon would say, hey, Anna, <laughs> there he is. Great joy would be in her heart. Why should we experience joy at Christmas? We get to realize that God loves us enough to come all the way down here where we are in this mess that man has made. That he loves us enough to come down into this mess that we realize that he, we, he loves us enough to become what we are so that one day we can go where he is. Man, that ought, to, that ought to bring us great joy. And realize that in Jesus we celebrate the one, the one, the one who can meet our every need. He is always there. I can tell you so many times in my life, where he's been there. You can too. We could stop and just have testimonies where you just talk about the good times and the hard times everywhere where Jesus has been there with you. But you know what? Maybe some of us come here today and we need to say, like King David said in Psalm 51, Lord, would you restore to me the joy of thy salvation. You're not experiencing the joy today. Different reasons as to why that may be the case. But you need to say to the Lord today with all your heart, Lord, would you restore unto me the joy of knowing you. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the fact that you love us the way that you do. You care for us so much that you came to become one of us. What, the, what a great message, Lord, that is to, to us and the message that we can share with the entire world that you love them. And Lord, we can share it with people that we go to work with that are struggling. We can, we can share it with folks that we go to school with that need to have an answer as to why they feel the way that they do, and why they're so frustrated, and why they're so hurt. And Lord, that we can remind them that Jesus loves them and cares for them. And then for us, Lord, personally, we allow the things of life sometimes to steal our joy. The enemy wants to steal our joy. But Lord, we cry out to you today restore the joy of the salvation that you provided for us. And, and if, Lord, I pray for those that are not saved today, they would understand just how much you love them and how much you care for them. Lord, would you restore the joy so that other people will be able to see Jesus in us and that we would focus on what you have done. Not where we are in life and all the things that's going on around us, but that we would focus on you. That joy 
one will be restored. And that's what we do. Help us, Lord. Thank you for what you've done for us. In Jesus' name. And if you need Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, and you say, man, I, I need to be saved today, and the Holy Spirit of God is speaking to you, and you say, I, I know I, I need to be saved. You call out to him right now. It doesn't, <laughs> you don't have to have the fancy words. You don't have to have everything just right in what you say, but God's looking at your heart. Cry out to him now, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. The altar's open for people to come. If you pray and ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, and you surrender your life to him, then you come and you let me know. And I want to be able to rejoice with you. Let's stand together. Brother Larry, lead us, please.